In this video, I'm going to show the Ubuntu Mate 22.04 users how to upgrade to 24.04. Now, this will work for probably Ubuntu and the other Ubuntu derivatives as well. So, uh, if you're using something other than Ubuntu Mate, these steps will probably work as well. And if you found the video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video so that you can follow the instructions because I've already upgraded here. Uh, and I'll show you before I actually bring up the web page. I'll open up my terminal and I'll put in NeoFetch. And I know NeoFetch is no longer being developed. It actually, the last time it was uh, updated was in 2020, which was four years ago. And it's recently been archived, but it still works, so I still use it. But as you can see here, uh, I'm using Ubuntu Mate 24.04, the long term support. It comes with the kernel 6.8.0 31 generic. Uh, and that shows how long I've been having my computer on. Uh, I'm using the Bash shell. My resolution is 1920 by 1080. I'm using the Mate 1.26.1. And I'm not going to read everything because this is according to the specs of your system. But as you can see here, I am using Ubuntu Mate 24.04. Let me close the terminal. And let me open up this. Here's one thing I recommend uh, users to do before they start the upgrade is to use the YPPA manager and if you don't have that installed on your system I do have a link on my website that shows you how to install it and actually how to use the program. And the reason I recommend you to install this is because you can open up the YPPA manager and click the advanced button and you can back up your repositories because not all the repositories that you have in version 20.04 or 20. Uh, will work in 24.04 or even 22.04 uh, so some of the repositories may not work so I recommend you to back them up then once you back them up you can run the update manager and then after you finish with the update manager updating to the newer version of Ubuntu you can go back through and say re-enable the working PPAs after the Ubuntu upgrade so it will go through and see all the the repositories that were previously installed and it will check to make sure they're going to work with the newest version of Ubuntu or Ubuntu Mate or any of the other Ubuntu derivatives and it will uh, re-enable those PPAs that will work and it will not re-enable the ones that won't work now that's not to say you won't have any errors with some of the security keys but I'll show you more about that in just a moment so let me minimize this and I'm gonna open up my YPPA manager and if you open up the YPPA manager you're gonna click the advanced button once you click the advanced button there's lots of things that you can do here and that's why I like using the YPPA manager because you can scan and remove duplicates because when your looks looking for updated PPAs and then you're installing your updates if you got multiple PPAs that, du that are duplicate installed on your system it just takes more time to go and get and update the PPA so this will scan and remove duplicates and if you're missing uh, CPG keys you can click this and it will take some time sometime to scan these so if you click and you can't see anything happening in the background just wait when it finishes it will pop up and it will can also fix a lot of bad signature errors uh, here's where the backup repository is if you click OK it will pop up allowing you to name it and it will generally have a name you just choose a location and then instead of saying restore the backup repositories after the upgrade I recommend you to choose re-enable the working PPAs so this will it will do as I said earlier it will check all the PPAs that you backed up that was previously installed because when you're installing an upgrade it's going to uh, unselect all the PPAs third-party PPAs that you've installed allowing you to go back in there after you uh, upgraded and a lot of times you should check them one at a time because if you check them all at one and multiple don't work it can create all kind of errors and this right here takes that work out of it for you and then after you've done the upgrade and it still has some of the older names with some of the PPAs you can go on there and say update the release name so that you can change it to the current release that you currently have installed now there's other things that this can do but that's not the scope of this video this is just showing you how you can uh, update your PPAs and then restore your PPAs so that's the YPPA manager now, now once that you've uh, took care of your PPAs here's what you need to do is you need to open up your terminal simply copy and paste this command just by right clicking hit copy put it into your terminal press the enter return key and because you're issuing the sudo command it will prompt you for your password and then eventually it may come up and look like it's scanning for your 
uh, updates and then it may say there's an upgrade available you just click the upgrade button I don't think I took a screenshot of that one uh, but then eventually when it pops up it will pump up with a release notes as a little dialog box giving you a chance to read uh, about the new version which is a Ubuntu 20.04 the long-term support of Noble Nombat now just because it says Ubuntu 24.04 if you're using Ubuntu Mate or any of the other Ubuntu derivatives it's not going to wipe out that and replacing it with the uh, vanilla or main Ubuntu it's just going to upgrade your Ubuntu files to the newest version and then it will upgrade the Mate to the nearest version of Mate so you click the upgrade button and when it does that it's going to go through six steps it's going to take a while to prepare for the upgrade so you just sit back and watch it go through the six steps now you can't really walk away because sometimes it will prompt you especially when it's installing the upgrades sometimes it will prompt you saying do you want to overwrite an older file like a system file or a config file with a newer config file and a lot of times I'll choose the newer except for the grub because I have made some changes in my grub I do choose the older ones because of the way that I've mounted put some things in there because of my Plex media server so I do choose the older version instead of the newer version but you just sit back and watch these so the first step it will go through is preparing to upgrade and then it will automatically uh, move down to the setting the new software channels and then it will go through and getting new packages and because it's getting the new packages this is where it downloads the actual newer version of Ubuntu Mate 24.04 and then after it downloads that it will take a while to get that according to your speed and according to the time of day because uh, certain times of day it could be slower than others and then uh, here's where it goes through and installs the upgrade so it will take some time after it downloads the new packages to go through and install the upgrades now when it's on this particular step which is the fourth step you may want to set in front of it or at least come back from time to time uh, so if it does prompt you do you want to overwrite an older config file with a newer config file and that can be up to you uh, make sure you read it before you choose yes or or no and then once it finishes the upgrade process it will then go and clean up the installation files that's no longer needed and then it will prompt you to restart your computer and once it restarts it may appear to be slower than normal restarting because it's still doing some configuration in the background of your system and it may do it for the next two or three times after you reboot but then after you've done that a few times rebooted a few times or turn your system off and on it will then boot up very quickly uh, depending upon how many applications you got in your startup now once you're finished you can you can use NeoFetch or if you don't have NeoFetch on your system you don't have to install it you can uh, after it's completed you can copy that and put this into your terminal that list of commands put it into your terminal press the enter return key and you can see that it shows you that I'm using Ubuntu 20.04 the long-term support uh, and it's noble the reason I like the NeoFetch is because not only does it show me that I'm using Ubuntu see here it just shows Ubuntu here it actually shows me that I'm using Ubuntu Mate now there's other things if you've got Ubuntu Mate on your system there's other tools that you can use to check it instead of using the terminal you can use the system monitor the Mate system monitor and you can see that it's using the Ubuntu which is Mate over here release 24.04 the long-term support which is Noble Nombat the 64-bit uh, and it's using here it's showing a little different than it does within NeoFetch this is the actual newest version of Mate in NeoFetch it showed I'm using 1.26.2 I mean point one, but here it shows I'm using 1.26.2 so this is the newest version so that way I guess because NeoFetch hasn't been updated in quite a while that's one of the reasons why there's a discrepancy there so you might if you're not sure about something you may want to use more than one way to check what version you have installed other methods and if you don't have installed I do have this on my website as well is I the system profiler and benchmark you can click on that and it'll take a while and then when it's finished it shows you I'm using Ubuntu 20.404 the long-term support and if you do a summary and more about the operating system it will give you a lot more information about your system and one last thing if you're a gamer on Linux you may want to install the CPU X and I do have this on my system as well it will give you everything about your uh, CPU your cache your motherboard your system as you can see here I'm using Ubuntu this really doesn't show the mate but it uh, 
there's other things like I just showed you on your system that will check. Now, one of the things I do have uh, on my system here or on my web page is when you're finished updating, how to go and re-enable that that I've already told you about earlier. Uh, so once that you see your system is working, I recommend you to then to go and say re-enable the working PPAs after an upgrade. And then uh, it will take a while because it will try each of the PPAs that it previously had. And if there's some that's not working with a newer version, it will not re-enable it. It will keep it unchecked so that way it will not create an error message. And then when it's finished, it will then show you when you hit the OK. It will scan all your PPAs that were disabled after the upgrade and re-enable -re those that will work with your current version. That's why I like using the YPPA manager uh, before I do any upgrades. And sometimes when we, even when I get an error with PPAs, this right here helps me fix a lot of the errors that I encounter with, with third-party PPAs. When you're finished, you can copy the entire command here, which is sudo app get update and then sudo app get upgrade to make sure that you're not going to have any problems with your PPAs or your uh, the third party PPAs on your system. So you can also do it individually where you can copy and say sudo app get update and this is what I, I do. I don't copy the whole string. I let it do one process and then I see if I have any problems here and then I do the next process. So I just so sudo app get update put in my password and I let it go through and check all my third party PPAs to make sure that there's no errors and then it will also let you know that if there's any upgrade available because when they created the uh, upgrade the ISO it's been some time before that so there's probably will show you it'll probably say that there's so many files that need upgrading after you do the uh, upgrade so then I recommend you to go in here and do the sudo app get upgrade so that way that you'll get the newest versions to the newest operating system that you got installed. In this case there's none that will showed up here but at least you see there's no errors after I've upgraded the system. Now currently there actually were some. Now there also were some files that were held back. So if it was held back you can put this into your terminal sudo aptitude safe upgrade and I'll put that in there but there's none held back here but you can put that into your system and that will install any of the it will safely install any files that were held back during the upgrade so that way it will work with the files that's currently on your system And if you don't have the safe upgrade on your system you can click on this link here and I do have more information about how you can install that on your system the safe upgrade on your system now after I installed that going through each of my application programs there were some uh, app images that were not opening and it's not because I didn't have the libfuse installed. What the problem was is libfuse on 20.04 and 22.04 was upgraded to libfuse 2, uh, 2T64. So that works with the majority of the most current app images, but some of your older app images, it will not work. So what's happening here, this allows you to open up the app image into a sandbox, kind of like a virtual machine. So it can't, if there's any uh, problems with the Apple image itself it won't run rampant on your system and uh, mess up your system but until these apps uh, get fixed or upgraded to work with the newer lib views then here's a here's a, a temporary fix now one of the applications was the uh, imagine and I'm just using that as an example I showed you how to install it on there and I showed it with it example of an app image. Originally in my main menu when I go up here and go to graphics and I click on to uh, the imagine here uh, it actually has a link or to that app image and before this would not work and when I go to the folder of it and double click it it didn't work. I checked the permissions and it should automatically run as an executable file but that didn't work. So what I had to do was I had to put at the end of that path here I had to include this right here which says app image uh, I put the name of the file make sure there's a dot in front of it so you include the path with a dot indicate that you want to run this as an executable file put the name of the app image space dash dash no dash sandbox so that way you're going to run this application but you're not going to sandbox it so don't run 
every application or app image that you download from the internet make sure it's a trusted app image because you're not going to be sandboxing it because that's what this file here allows you to do run it safely in a sandbox so that it can't run rapid on your system but if you do have some older app images that are no longer that's not updated to this you can put the dash dash no dash sandbox at the end of the path and it will run as you saw when I clicked on to the imagine now if I go to my app images and I just click on the imagine right here and I can wait and I can wait and I can wait and it will never load but there's a lot of them that will load like if I double click on gift curry it takes a moment and then it, it will load see here it is it will load it takes a little while uh, but it does load but this one here never loads until you run the uh, no sandbox and another way you can do this is you can actually take this right here and you can copy this right here where it's got the dot put the name of the file in no sandbox I can actually open up let me clear my terminal and let me close out my browser or minimize my browser and imagine was one of those files that just would not load if you don't want to put the program into your menu you can actually and I'm gonna close my terminal I'm going to open it where my app images are. Say open in terminal. So you can see here I'm in my app images folder. That's the current folder that's active. So now I can simply just take this file here and cut paste what I put in there, which is the dot imagine. And I could just simply copy that right here, that file name, and put in here after the dot forward slash. And then I could add space dot dash dash no sandbox. Press the enter key. Let me get into my terminal, press the enter key, and after a few moments, it will load. And that's how I figured out that the problem was it with that file, the libt, the file that I showed you on the website, which was this one. I knew that that was the problem because here I'm, I'm going to load it. Now I'm going to load it, try to load it without the no sandbox. I'm just going to drag this over here, put it in my terminal, press the enter key. Let me go back to my terminal, press the enter key and here it tells me what the problem is uh, it tells me that it cannot sandbox it it says it was uh, not configured correctly and that's because this is working with the older version instead of the newer version that got updated during the upgrade so in order to fix that for a temporary fix just add the no sandbox there was another couple weak keys that it had and here is a fix for that I'm not going to get into too much details with that because this right here depends upon the third-party PPAs that you have installed on your system so here is a temporary fix for that and I know this right here might be complicated and some people may not even find this because I've labeled this upgrading to Ubuntu Mate 24.04 but I will eventually make a video just on this for anyone that's using Ubuntu or any of the Ubuntu derivatives how that they can open up app images that are not opening properly on their system and then also for people that have uh, some weak keys I can show them how to fix that after an upgrade as well so hopefully if you're upgrading Ubuntu or Ubuntu Mate or the uh, any of the other Ubuntu derivatives maybe hopefully this right here will show you how you can run some of the software that had trouble after the upgrade now other than that everything else that I had on my system worked great I had no other problems and it worked flawlessly uh, during the upgrade process I didn't really encounter any errors it went very smoothly so hopefully if you're thinking about uh, upgrading to the newest version of the long-term support of Ubuntu Mate that you follow those instructions uh, hopefully it will go well with you as it did with me hopefully this video is to help someone and have a great day